Welcome to Political Forum for this Wednesday, July 10th, 2013. Please join us in welcoming our guest for today, Alderman Nicholas Posado of the 36th Ward. Alderman, thank you for appearing on Political Forum. Thanks for having me, Monica. I really appreciate it. It's always a pleasure to come and do your show. Thank you, Alderman. Political Forum is brought to you as a community service by CAN TV. I'm your host for today, Monica Torres Linares, a CAN TV board member. Political Forum is a live interactive show, so during the next 25 minutes, we will try to get to as many as your questions. So if you have any comments or questions for the Alderman, please call us at 312 738 1060. Alderman, please tell us about yourself. Well, I've been an Alderman for two years now. Uh, before that, I was a fireman for 18 years. And before that, I uh, worked for United Parcel Service for 16 years. Great. Well, I had an unusual path to the Alderman's office. I was not a uh, some any sort of commissioner in the city. I wasn't an attorney. I had no uh, family ties and um, just ran as your average Joe, and here I am today. Great. Um, you were elected. You were elected in 2011. Um, how is this year different than the previous years? Uh, well, you just, you know, you, you get better at the job every day, you, you learn more, um, you know, in the beginning you have some bumps in the road, um, you know, if it wasn't for my staff, I would have had a lot more problems. I, I hired a really good staff, uh, a really experienced girl as my office manager. She worked for Alderman Doherty for uh, about 15 years, and she's been a true blessing to myself and our community, um, and just every day we're learning, and it's just a pleasure to help uh, service the people of the 36th Ward. Thank you. Um, please tell us about your priorities this year. Well, priorities are we, you know, we service everybody. We do not deny any service to anybody. Um, there was a remap that went on, and some people feel they don't have to serve uh, the people in their elected boundaries anymore. They only want to serve people under appointed boundaries. But the 36th Ward, Nicholas Posado and his staff, we service everybody. So. If you come in, whether you're from the old ward or the new ward, we help everybody out. We turn nobody away. Okay. Is there any challenges to um, the redistricting? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, there is. There's uh, an attorney by the name of Tom Gagan uh, filed a lawsuit on behalf of the League of Women Voters, and I believe there's about 15 other people on there, and basically they're challenging the implementation. Um, my colleagues, uh, some of my colleagues, uh, feel that uh, it should have been Im it implemented um, a year and a half in, and myself and some other people feel it, is, uh, it, it should go in effect in May of 2015. Uh, Corporation Council from the city uh, set out a memorandum stating that it is a four-year term that you're in for, and um, you know we'll see where this goes. But uh, the powers to be have decided to uh, try to implement the new map. So, and somebody is fighting that right now, and. Um, I'm pretty confident that uh, that is illegal to implement this new map arbitrarily like this. Okay. You. This is the contact information for Alderman Nick Spos Nicholas Sposado. Excuse me. Um, he's located at 6934 West Diversity. Uh, he. Uh, his phone number is 773-836-0036. And um, his website is aldermansposado.com. And I believe we have a caller. Caller, what is your question? Hi. Um, I would really like to get the alderman's thoughts on concealed carry coming to Chicago and whether or not he believes that will make us safer or if the city is going to try to put any additional sort of ordinances in place around the concealed carry decisions. Uh, I don't know that it'll make it any safer, but I don't know that it'll make it any less safe. Uh, there's all kind of things people talk about. Some people are worried about the, our town will turn into the wild, wild west. Um, I don't believe that'll happen. I mean, it's, it's pre pretty violent right now, um, but I really don't know that it'll make it any safer. I believe that the people that'll be uh, uh, concealing and carrying are going to be law-abiding, uh, good people. I don't think you're going to be seeing criminals conceal and carry legally. I mean, so they already conceal and carry, but illegally. So um, I, I, don't, I don't know if it'll be safer or less safe. So I don't know if the criminals will have second thoughts now wondering if somebody has a gun or not. But uh, time will tell. Um, I, I, I know it hasn't been a, much of a problem in, in most other states. So it's the law and we have to abide by the law in this city. So Thank you, caller, for that question. 
Um, Alderman, are there anything interesting going on in City Hall? Any retirements? Well, as you know, Monica, yes, there is a retirement. Uh, Alderman Mel uh, retired in uh, effective uh, July 24th, and so he will, there will be a replacement in place for him on that day, July 24th. Uh, if anybody is interested in it, they have from uh, July 5th to July 11th, I believe, to apply for the position, and then a panel will determine um, if they think you're the uh, best candidate or not. Okay, great. Um, I believe we have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Good evening, Alderman. Um, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this, because this discussion has been brought up again about bringing in the National Guard. Uh, because of all the all the violence that's been occurring, because uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, it's not something I would really like to see. I would just like to see more police officers on the street. Um, right now, we're working our police officers to death. Well, not to death, but we're working them. You know, getting a ton of overtime. Guys are working, you know, seven days a week for months straight. Uh, I just believe we need more police on the street. Uh, National Guard is not something I would want to see in this city. It doesn't look good for us. Uh, but more police officers, I just don't think we're prop properly staffed as many officers as we need on the street. So, um, you know, I know this year supposedly we're hiring 600 officers, but these, this 600 is replacing about the 1,500 that we've lost in the last three years. So um, all we're doing is we just, we're just we not keeping up with our retirements, and we need more police on the street, and that's something I, I, I really believe. So, Caller, thank you for that question. Um, Alderman, please tell us about the schools in your district. Are there more well, we have, we have no school closings, I'm, I'm glad to report. Um, we have an opposite problem, though. We have very overcrowded schools. Um, so we have all pretty good schools. I have uh, five, five grammar schools, uh, uh, CPS schools, that is. Uh, we have a charter school, and we have a couple Catholic schools. And, you know, Catholic schools are struggling a little, and the... Um, Public schools, are, they're doing great. We have great principals there. They're doing great things. Um, unfortunately, as everybody knows, they have cut budgets big time at the schools. Um, and it got cut so bad that I am having a toilet paper drive for the, the schools in my ward. So we'll be having it in September. Uh, pay attention to my, uh, check out my website. We'll be doing email blasts about it for a date to be determined. We're gonna have a big day, have like a picnic type day and ask people to just come come out and have a hot dog and a pop with us, but uh, bring, a, bring a couple rolls of toilet paper so we can help our schools out. Great. Um, Alderman, please tell us about uh, the blue carts. Uh, blue carts, that's recycling, and that started uh, last week in our ward. Um, went, went real well. People have been wanting it for a long time. Uh, my opinion is we should have been the first ward to get it, not one of the last. Uh, people are responding to it really well. Um, you know, uh, we only have half the ward that has it, and the implementation of the, of the rest of the ward will, will start uh, this month, and then the pickups will start uh, the second week of August. So uh, people are responding to it really good. It's from day one, since I've been in office, we probably get uh, you know three to five calls a week asking about recycling, when are we gonna get it, uh, can we get more carts? Uh, so I'm really proud of my community. Uh, we actually had a, at our ward yard, we have a dumpster, a recycling dumpster, that would have to be emptied out three times a week, which is pretty, it's pretty often. So, so my, my, my community definitely believes in recycling, they're doing a great job, they're doing the right thing, and they're really, really happy about that we now have recycling, not the full ward, Half the ward, but by the end of the month, uh, by the end of all, by the middle of August, everybody will have it. Great, Alderman. Please tell us about menu money. Menu. What menu money is is every alderman gets one point three million dollars a year to do ward improvements, and um, I have a pretty big ward, so it's not an easy decision to make. So basically, that. If I want to repave streets, if I want to put lighting in there, if I want to put money towards parks, if I want to put sidewalks in there, everything, I submit what I want to do. They tell me how much it'll be. Um, roughly, streets cost about you know fifty to sixty thousand. Um, you know, lights are pretty expensive. Sidewalks. So then I have to determine what 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 would be the best way to spend my money. 
Um, I built a park uh, a couple years ago. I put a uh, 200,000 towards the park, Shimbona Park. We got a new playground coming in that'll be, if it wasn't for the rain, we probably would have it up by now, but uh, hopefully another couple more weeks, that park will be done. Um, and then next year, I'm building another park at, at Hiawatha, not a park, I'm sorry, a playground. Building a playground at the park. And next year, we're gonna be building a playground at Hiawatha Park. So uh, two new playgrounds in uh, four years is an accomplishment I'm pretty proud of. Uh, especially Shabona, I uh, secured uh, funds for a playground uh, within a year with the help of my state rep, uh, Luis Arroyo, I may say. I'm, I'm, I thank him for his help. So we both pitched in some money, and uh, now we'll have a new playground in a couple uh, couple weeks. So Great. Um, Alderman, we have a, call, a question from a caller. Um, do, Alderman, do you think Chicago youth um, is having problems with the gangs because of the the lack of jobs and opportunities in the city of Chicago? Well, sure. I believe uh, if you know, it probably starts more at home uh, with the foundation that kids have a lot of. Um, you know, if they don't have a good foundation, then they then they turn to the wrong thing. They get misled by the wrong people. Um, so that's a problem. Of course, if they had jobs, maybe they wouldn't be out. You know, doing bad things, but. You know, sometimes some of these gangs, they got the easy money for, you know, selling drugs or stealing. You know, there's not many jobs kids are going to get that are much more than minimum wage jobs. So it's an easy way out. But, you know, you know, 99 percent of the kids in, in this city are great kids. It's just that one percent uh, or, you know, that are, is the problem. And uh, I, I wish more good kids could get jobs and we had more jobs for good kids. You know, the bad kids aren't going to want the jobs no matter what. So. Okay. Alderman, I believe we have another uh, caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Yes, uh, good evening. Uh, Alderman, I know that I believe that the city parking stickers uh, need to go into effect because people have, to have them on their cars on the, by the 16th. If you, if I don't have my sticker yet, uh, is it too late to get one? And what kind of advice would you give me? No, you have you have till the 15th to get it. Then you, uh, you have to the 15th to get it. Right now, you have to go to the currency exchange. Uh, one of the satellite offices are at City Hall, one of those uh, places. Uh, the lines have been a mile long, I know. We had sticker day uh, last Monday at our office, and we were slammed all day. And I actually had two sticker days. That was my second day, and we got slammed on both of them. So I don't understand what's going so crazy about this. But if you do live in a permit parking on your block, that, sh that should be on already. So permit parking, you had to have it by July 1st. Um, if not, you got to the to the to the fifteenth to get it on, and the sixteenth they'll start enforcing it. So if you didn't get your sticker, get it now. It costs you a big fine if they catch you without it. Make sure you put it on. Don't delay. Um, like I say, you could. Uh, I believe Dominic sells them. Currency exchanges. I mean, they charge you a five to seven dollar fee, but don't wait anymore. You do have some more time, but get it on. Thank you, caller, for that question. We have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Hi, you mentioned um, that you have menu money for your district. Are you going to be doing any kind of like participatory budgeting process like I know some other wards have experimented with? Yeah, it was something I, I talked about this year, but I never really got it off the ground. I, I think next year we're going to try it. Uh, I think it's a good program, uh, but sometimes you worry about, you know, a group of people could dominate and get stuff that really didn't need to be done because they're a little more organized than other parts of the community. But, uh, yeah, I don't think it could go wrong with uh, participatory budgeting. Uh, people like to be part of the process. Every time we have community meetings and let people be part of a process uh, for zoning issues in my ward, I base all my decisions on what the community says. Um, we have a community meeting about it. If we need a zoning change, we bring in the person that wants the zoning change, and um, we bring the community in, and they give them a thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, so far, every project other than one project has gotten the thumbs up. So I'm guessing, Monica, you want to know what the one uh, one zoning yes. change that got the thumbs down? Well, a pawn shop came to us, and the um, community did not want the pawn shop. And um, we said no. Uh, they went around my back, went to the uh, who's the person that's supposed to be the new alderman, uh, got support from her on it. And um, basically, uh, the ZBA, which is a Zoning Board of Appeals, allowed them to... Uh, to build a pawn shop, but we're still fighting it. I filed a lawsuit against it to try to stop it. Uh, we basically have five five pawn shops within two blocks uh, from the area where the new pawn shop is. So wow. community's not too happy about it. I'm not giving up the fight on this. Like I said, I filed a lawsuit. A local attorney uh, is volunteering their services to represent us. So uh, 
We thank him for representing us, and hopefully we could uh, stop these guys and get rid of them. Thank you, caller, for that question. Alderman, please tell us about um, changes in caps. Uh, police caps? Yes. Police caps? Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I guess they're doing some online stuff. I, I wasn't 100% uh, sure what's going on there, which is uh, a good thing. But CAPS is a great program. I'm, I'm a big supporter of it. I've been going to my CAPS meetings for years since it started. Uh, my beat is an awesome beat. Um, our beat, beat facilitator does a good job. The CAPS people uh, in both the 16th and the 25th district uh, where I live are just awesome. They, res they respond. Um, um, yeah, I, I couldn't be more pleased with the, with, with the CAPS programs in the 16th and the 25th district. And uh, they're, you know, the, just the way they respond and help me out and help the community out. So, Thank you, Alderman. Alderman, um, you've hosted Alderman, um, animal rescues in the past. Yes. Are you going to do that yes. in the future? Yes, this will be my third year. Uh, my first year in office, we had a little mini one. It turned out to be a mini one. We just had it at the office and we got five dogs rescued. Uh, last year, I, we transferred it to Hiawatha Park at a day when there was a big, uh, big all-day soccer event on. It had like a thousand people there, and we got ten dogs rescued. So this year, we're hoping to kick it up five dogs again um, to get fifteen of them rescued. So uh, we'll be doing email blasts about it. Um, you know, check out my website. Uh, if you're not on my email list, sign up for it. If you live in my community, and you know, we we keep you as informed as we can what's going on. Um, Recently, we had some uh, FEMA stuff, speaking of, of stuff like that. So our, my community got destroyed uh, with floods. Uh, we brought FEMA in. They helped people out. Uh, we were constantly communicating. Uh, if you did have any disaster, any water damage, uh, you have till the 24th of July to apply. So um, some people are putting wrong information out there, saying you have till July 9th, but it's now to the 24th. So if you had any flood damage, FEMA has been awesome about this. We've gotten many a people call me and told me they just came out. They responded fast. They got money fast. So any flood damage, make sure you get a hold of FEMA, um, or you can call my office and we'll direct you to how to get a hold of them. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, we have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Yes, uh, I'd like to know. Uh, you mentioned about the parking permits. I'd like to know. Uh, when you have your, when you, when you pay all that money for your permit, and other people park in the area that do not live there. What can you do about? Now you basically about you basically have to call the police. I know it's a big problem. We get calls about it all, all the time. People saying somebody parked their car out there and they don't have the parking permit. So basically, you have to call the police or call your alderman's office, and then they'll call the police, and then they'll send them out there. So uh, I know people just think, I'll take my chances. I'm probably not going to get caught. I see it all the time. Uh, I have permit parking on my block. Um, you know, I never call the police about it, uh, but, you know, it's not that big of a deal to me. But, yeah, I know people constantly call. They live by trains. They live by business districts, and then they can't park in front of their house. So if you have permit parking on your block, you're paying for permit parking, Somebody's out there parking in front of your house and you can't park in front of your house, call the police or call your alderman and they'll call the police for you. Thank you, caller, for that question. You're watching Political Forum, a community service brought to you by Can TV. I'm your host for today, Monica Torres Linares, a Can TV board member. Um, this is a live and interactive show, so if you have any questions for Alderman Nicholas Bozzato, please call us at 312 738 1060. And I'm going to be showing again um, Alderman's contact information. He has a website. It's aldermansposado.com. His phone number is 773-836-0036. So, Alderman, um, are there any particular events that are going on in the summer in your ward? Uh, we're talking about uh, a couple basketball coaches want to run uh, talking about running a basketball camp for local kids. Uh, just talked to one of the park supervisors today about putting it together. So we're talking about the camp at the end of the summer. Of course, we'll have the uh, toilet paper drive for the uh, public schools that they now have to pay for everything uh, to try to help them out. Uh, I mean, uh, literally, they'll they have to spend thousands of dollars on toilet paper and paper towels. So we're trying to help them out there. I have an awesome community. My community responds well, so I'm confident it'll be a, a you know a great day with uh, people pitching in and trying to help out their local schools. Um, you know the animal rescue, um, the recycling, just a lot of good things are happening. 
Um, like I say, it's just an awesome community, safest community in the city, I believe. Uh, very little crime. Um, you know, murders are almost non-existent. Um, just, just so proud of my community. It's a very diverse community too, by the way, I might add. So, um, it's about a one her one third Hispanic, uh, maybe about 15, 20 percent African American, and the rest white, and with maybe about five percent um, uh, Polish that are more, more, you know, first generation Polish here. But uh, everybody gets along great. Uh, it's just awesome when I go out to black parties and I see the mix of people out there, everybody getting along, and just, you know, it's just I'm just so proud of my community. So couldn't be happier with the way they treat each other and respond so that's great to hear alderman please tell us about um you have ward night on thursdays ward night is thursday night but um my ward night isn't much of a ward night because i see people all day every day if i'm in the office you come to see me i, I see you i mean I, I don't make you say i don't tell you to come back on thursday night uh between five and seven i just you know if i'm there i see you um, so there's usually not many people at my ward nights, um, but like I say, I see people all week during the week, every week. So, uh, saw a couple people today, they came in unannounced and I didn't turn them away. I just, I, I see them and I try to help them out. So great. We have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Hi, I wanted to know more about the, um, caucus that the Otterman is involved in. Okay. We're in, uh, we call ourselves the progressive caucus and, uh, um, as you know, we're all pretty much independent, try to do the right thing uh, for what the people want. Um, and, um, you know, it's just, it's just a great group of people. You have myself, you have Alderman Fioretti, um, um, Arena, Munoz, Sawyer, Folks, Hairston, and Pawar. So um, there's just uh, people really respond to us and like what we stand up for and do it. We're kind of known as the anti-mayor uh, caucus, but really that's not the case. Um, I know a majority of us have kind of, you know, not voted along with the mayor, but we're not really the anti-mayor. So that's the misinterpretation of what we are out there. We're, we're not out there to, to bash the mayor or be against them. We just stand up for what we think is right. And, and that's what we're about. So. Thank you, caller, for that question. Alderman, we just have a few minutes left. Is there any final thoughts or comments that you would like to make uh, to the viewers? We covered a lot of stuff in a, in a, in a short time. I uh, told you I'm not much of a talker. I know a lot of my, uh, a lot of my conversations were short and brief. Um, but no, I, I, we really covered a lot. I mean, um, I just couldn't be happier to serve the people at the 36th Ward. It's an awesome community, awesome neighbors, you know, hardworking, you know, blue collar type, you know, good, strong families, you know, good, small local businesses no no real big stuff we all we have mars candy we have radio flyer we do have some big stuff i take it back you know and we have a home depot um, but for the most part all mom pop type you know family businesses uh you know great restaurants and fast food places and just great local stores and it's a you know it's more of a residential district than a uh than a business district but uh just an awesome community good schools good people i just like just such an honor to represent my community Alderman, thank you for appearing on Political Forum. Thank you, Monica. It's always a pleasure to come on this show. So. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, thank you, viewers, for your call. Our telephone technician for today has been Steve. Political Forum is brought to you as a community service by Can TV. Please join us next Wednesday for another edition of Political Forum. Have a good evening.